Okay, ready to watch another patron-requested movie? Oh yeah, Almost Human by Umberto Lenzi. Sounds like it's a great Italian horror flick. Yeah. This isn't a horror movie. Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? We're drinking Chang Sing Yellow Turban IPA. They know your name. <laughs> That's not good. Today we're going to be covering 1974's Almost Human by Umberto Lenzi. And this is a patron request requested by Douglas Draw. Umberto Lenzi has directed tons of stuff. Just to mention a couple of the more horror-themed things he's done, he did Cannibal for Rocks. Furo, Furo, and Ghost House, <laughs> which I'd like to cover one day for a trash or treasure. <laughs> Henry Silva is in this, and he's a huge actor. You've seen him probably in everything. He was in Alligator and the original Ocean's Eleven from 1960, I think. And the Manchurian Candidate. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Thomas Milan is in this too, and he was in Oz which is one of our favorite showcase shows. The first HBO show that really kind of knocked TV on its ass, yeah. really. <laughs> JFK and Traffic, just to mention a couple others. Almost Human starts off with this gang of thieves and they're gonna rob a bank. And our main character here, Julio, is in charge of being like the driver, the getaway driver. He's parked in front of the bank and this cop comes around. I gotta see your ID. So instead of trying to fib his way out of it, he just fucking kills the cop right there in broad daylight. Sabotage this robbery before it even gets going. Yeah. So the guys come out, they actually do get away, but they have to like kidnap this kid. Ditch the kid in the side of the yeah. road. At the end, they do get away with it, but they're pretty pissed off at Julio for kind of fucking things up. But they take the boots to him, they beat the shit out of this guy. Julio is just a two-bit piece of shit criminal. He goes to break into the cigarette dispenser and his cop kind of sees, stabs a the cop kills him, goes to his girlfriend's house, and pretty much rapes his own girlfriend while her sick mother's all in the yeah. other room dying. Like, yeah. oh, what a piece of shit. And he's looking for money and she doesn't have any. Yeah. Like, I'll give you Napoleon. Then. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> So after raping his own girlfriend, he drops her off at work. Yeah. And he sees that her boss is fucking loaded. And his boss has this daughter. He comes up with this great plan to kidnap the daughter and hold her ransom. He hires a couple of goons to help him out with this. A bunch of idiots, because he's an idiot. So to go along with this plan, you need even bigger idiots, right? <laughs> steals his own girlfriend's car after she explicitly told him she couldn't have it to get some guns to conduct this kidnapping he goes to this guy known as papa a talking business and there's a down payment he's kind of renting the gun which is kind of neat you know you rent the gun you bring it back when you're fucking done as long as you didn't kill anybody with it he doesn't want to pay the price it costs to rent these guns so he just fucking guns down papa <laughs> and his wife Julio and these two idiot thugs track down the girl that they're gonna kidnap, this makeout spot. They pop a bunch of pills. They put a bunch of rocks under the tires of the car. They go to get the girl. Julio's all goofing around. It's some serious thing. He's all putting his face on the yeah. glass. <laughs> <laughs> and the boyfriend tries to be a hero. Guns the kid down with a machine gun. The girl takes off. She's gone. The girl ends up coming upon this big house in the woods. Gets inside, and the people that are inside, they're kind of having a bit of a drinking yeah, party. You know, drinking. <laughs> He's asking them for help, right? They kind of take her in and, okay, we're going to look after you. Julio and the two idiots get into the house. They didn't lock the door. They proceed to terrorize uh, all these people that are in the house. Yeah. Julio all makes that guy give him an equal opportunity favor, basically. <laughs> an equal opportunity blowjob. <laughs> They don't show how the guy got out of it either. No. <laughs> I don't think he did. And then it shows everybody all strung up on that fucking chandelier. Like, yeah. how in the hell did they do that? How'd you get them all the way up there? <laughs> That's gotta be one strong fucking chandelier. <laughs> to hold three people? <laughs> They're all naked and everything too. They hear a, a noise upstairs and Julio goes to check it out and just shoots. It ends up being a child. Everybody's distraught at the killing of this kid, and Julio just can't take it anymore. He just fucking, they just gun down all the people that are hanging on this chandelier, too. Like, Jesus Crazy. Christ. 
Inspector Walter Grandi is on the case now. He's also getting royally pissed off at seeing a lot of these petty crimes happening and nobody's ever getting caught for them, right? Or right. somebody yeah. does get caught, they get released right away, Slap right? the wrist. Following all of these crimes, these murders, that just so happened to be committed by Julio and his fucking gang. Julio ends up taking his girlfriend out for a bit of a ride. What would you do if you heard me say that I killed three women, two men, and a child? You should be like, what? Well, like, I'd say you're joking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, would you turn me in? Yes, I would, right away. Pull up to like this nice spot that, on this cliff that overlooks a, a lake. Shows her the paper, the headline of all these people that, that are killed. Right away, she starts freaking out. He opens the door, jumps out of the car, and lets go of the clutch, and the car goes right over the cliff with her inside. Julio's willing to do anything. They end up taking the boss's daughter to this boathouse to kind of keep her while they devise a plan or a scheme to ransom her and get the boss to give him all this money. That's where we're gonna end the plot. If you wanna see what happens with Julio and his fucking idiot gang, and the inspector who's on the case, keep watching. So the first thing we'll have to mention about Almost Human is that it's not a horror movie. <laughs> no, you might have noticed. This is the first non-horror movie we've really covered. Death Weekend is yeah. the closest, really, as far as being just kind of more of a thriller, but it was requested, so we did it. Yeah. And it was an interesting watch, you know, to watch an Italian crime thriller. Good, solid fucking movie. It does kind of keep you on the edge of your seat. And it's gory. It's probably gorier than a lot of horror movies. There's yeah. a lot of fucking murder in this. <laughs> yeah. Thomas Milan basically carries the entire movie. He's a very strong actor, and you need to be for a movie like this. He plays the perfect, perfect piece of shit. Not even human. Exactly. He's yeah. almost human. He does a very good job of making you hate his guts. Yeah. Kind of reminded me of an Italian like Quentin Tarantino movie. The heist, the thriller, and a lot of dialogue. And the only negative thing I really had to say about this movie is those heavy dialogue scenes are a little kind of draggy. This character is so fucking crazy. You have to keep watching to see what the hell he's gonna do next. Yeah, because he can literally do anything. All the settings for this movie are very cool. Like, there's not one boring setting. They're either like elaborate, night rich yeah. house, nice looking, or it's a complete dump. Interesting choice of setting, really. It's well, it not, kinda, nothing is mundane. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of mirrors the characters. Julio's a piece of shit, so a lot of times he seeks out these shitty looking places to take everybody. Seek refuge, right? Yeah, because yeah. he's a piece of garbage. The guy's clearly got no taste. The setting reflects the characters yeah. a lot, yeah. yeah. The pacing is, is actually pretty good in this movie, but like you mentioned, like, when it gets into the heavy dialogue scenes, it does slow down. That's about probably the only bad thing about it, but for the most part, it's pretty action-packed. Starts off full gear with mm -hmm. that bank robbery. Crazy car chase in the beginning of the movie. It does a good job of like getting you invested right away. And then when you know how big of a piece of shit Julio is, you can't shut this movie off. <laughs> you have to see what's going to happen to this fucking guy. He's got to pay for his crime. That leads us into the dynamics of the characters too, right? Obviously you have Julio, who's a piece of garbage, but you also have all of the side characters that sort of, they kind of feed him yeah. al almost, right? Nobody really wants to stand up and stop him. You kind of get mad at everybody else too. It's like, fuck, you're right there. Just shoot him in the back or something. Yeah. Just stop him. Yeah. The dynamic between all the characters is very interesting because you start off with Julio's little guy in the totem pole. The shit kicked out of him for fucking up the robbery. Even though he's the lowest guy in that totem pole, there's still people below, below him, <laughs> yeah. which he can hire and to do his stupid fucking crimes, right? So it's like, doesn't matter how low you are, there's someone lower. Exactly. And the, the development is great too, like how his character develops. And the... It's all the, ego though. He's it's not like all, he's rising in power. No. His ego is, but he isn't. Yeah, he, the crazier the situations get and that he puts himself into, the lower he goes, yeah. right? The more of a piece of shit he becomes to try and achieve all this yeah. shit. Yeah, and his cronies he hired, they're like, oh, 
Yeah, he's off the fucking this rails. This guy's off the fucking rails. <laughs> like, they don't necessarily agree with everything he's doing. Yeah, but they go along with it. Which is interesting. I really like that dynamic. Mm -hmm. This movie also has a couple of really good twists at the end. It's kind of two major twists. We're not going to give them away, but there's twist one, and then you think the movie might be over, then there's twist number two. Yeah, yeah. The music for this movie was done by Ennio Morricone, a master himself. But... He kind of shit the bed on this one a little bit. It, it falls into the very generic yeah. music. Generic 70s action uh, yeah, yeah. music. It's not memorable, really. It doesn't really strike any uh, any feeling in you. Not like Good and the Bad and the Ugly no. or any of those masterful fucking scores. This is uh, like a paycheck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he just did it quick and that was it. This movie does a great job of making you feel just fucking uneasy. Yeah. Because you're just watching horrific crime after horrific crime. <laughs> Is he going to get caught? Is he going to get away with it? He fucking might. He might just get away with all this, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's really what you're waiting for. Yeah. Throughout the whole movie, it's like, fucking somebody catch him. Yeah. Somebody get him. He needs to pay. Does he? Yeah. I don't know. We're going to find out. This movie is definitely a commentary on crime, yeah, right? Yeah, justice and people paying for what they're doing. This guy has done so much awful stuff. What sentence could you deal with this guy to make him pay for this? Yeah, is jail time enough? Yeah. Or, you know, maybe not. Is death good enough? Maybe that's too quick. Yeah, like it's definitely a commentary on that, the judicial system and how everything gets doled out. The victims, too, in all of this. Right. You know? They don't get their justice. <laughs> Even though it's not a horror movie, it is a fucking interesting watch. It's entertaining, it's shocking, uneasy, yep. and it has something to say about fucking crime and criminals. That justice. Is. Even cops having their hands tied. The morals that the cops have to live by too. It has to make them follow a line. Maybe I don't want to walk that line anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, if you want like a good crime thriller that's like in the line of Tarantino type movies. Death Wish. May not be horror. But definitely check out Almost Human by Umberto Lenzi. <laughs> and until next time, keep drinking.